Here we go. It's time for another sprint zone. And this one is for 926. Got a nice size group here, a little bit smaller than usual, about 19 or 20. And we see a reasonable formation as Ben Miller goes up the left hand side. Everyone taking it easy, trying to keep the pace down because the melee is about to begin and we want to be fully recovered. Looking rearward, things are looking pretty good. Everyone's taking their time. And Mr. Miller there breaks the rules of engagement going off the front. The rules of engagement state, the contest may not begin until everyone is safely around the corner. And perhaps you didn't know, but I'm stating it again, as I've stated it before. Regardless, there's a little bit of a slowdown here, and I think it's lethargy. People at the front not want to do anything. Uh, and they were looking for good position, and, and, and that's fair. But at 15 miles an hour, uh, I think you can sort your positions out a little bit faster than that. So I'm, I'm kind of sitting back here, looking up front, and what do I see? I see... I see weak people in front of me and I don't want to see that in front of me because I know that I'm going to get gapped off and that's happened before. So I think to myself, I need, I need to be up closer to the front. Is there a price to pay for that? Yes, there is, but it's not as bad as the price of sitting back and then glancing up and seeing that somebody didn't hold the gap someone who didn't come out of the line and signal hey i can't hold it to allow others to come through but they kind of sit in the way and then you're you're hosed and in such it's time to go to the front there goes brian we've got jc coming with me jason looks like mr lawyer and now our wad it's starting to hot up there 30 second power 240 yeah things are good as i've got myself a bead on ben Happily, JC comes through and he is looking strong, always willing to do the work, not looking to follow coattails. And it's probably because he's like really strong. And I know his FTP is at least 100 watts above mine. And so he can do that. I can just pretend. Regardless, the junction has been made and the recalcitrant has been brought back. But JC is not content, not content to sit on the wheels. He wants to go and make things happen. And that's what strong men do. They try to make a little selection there. We got Mr. Lawyer coming behind him. And now we've got three strong men. Men of TTH pedigree at the head of the stick. And this is really dangerous at this point. I'm in a, I'm in a really good position. You know, fourth is, is actually pretty good. I'd, rather be a little bit further back and the draft up here is like okay but i'm still kind of recovering a little bit from being up at the front it's amazing that even if the wattage drops it takes a little while for that lactic acid to like go back into the into the system so you're ready to go again looking rearward we got jason team sky we got brian above the station we got curtis there and what we can't see is curtis McElvain lurking in the shadows a strong man that for some reason not certain why he's not up at the front with his tth brethren but i digress power's looking good and i'm starting to feel better at this point and this little grid always sucks and you look at my peak power there 530 watts over this little raid and in many instances this can create a selection especially for those who like to push over the top now my 30 second power 250 above my FTP and I find myself in a position above my station, which I mean, it's better than being gapped off because I'm the guy who gets to open up the gap. But if I want to finish strong, this is not a really good place for me to be. And for a few milliseconds there, I saw my 30 second power over 300 watts. 260 is good enough. And there goes JC, Mr. Miller, kind of keeping him in check. I don't know if this is a lack of respect or he's looking for other people to come through. There's not a lot of people that would do that or could do that. Uh, Mr. Lawyer has recovered and now he's going for it. Ben, taking it easy. I don't think he's threatened by these two at this point, although maybe he should be, but he seems confident and there's probably enough disrupted air in front of him that he can come through. 
I'm hurting at this point, you know, 30 second power, still 270, and this has been happening for a while. And I'm kind of surprised that those behind me are not really doing anything, but content to ride coattails. So Curtis has not shown himself yet at the pointy end of the stick. We got Mark, the new guy, we got Marcelo back there, and we know that Mr. McIlvain is lurking in the shadows, well hidden. And now here is a selection point. This little grade doesn't look like much, but is one of the only places that the wheel suckers have to actually earn it. They have to pay the price. And without B train here, there is no train. There are no tickets to be had. You must ride on your own. JC at the front pushing hard. And now what do we have? Mr. McIlvain lurking in the shadow, seeing a dangerous move up the front, makes the junction. I see JC makes the little look to see if he's brought anybody back or to see if he's done any damage. But Curtis going to the front, going to try to make this one stick because he knows that this is a good combination. Looking rearward, still no reaction from people that are reasonably strong. I'm a little disappointed in Curtis here, a little disappointed in Marcelo. But these guys didn't make more of a move. So I've been sitting out, you know, because I let Ben go because I'm, I'm gassed. And maybe I can drag them up slowly, but no sharp accelerations for me. And we watch three people ride away from the rest of us. Yeah. So I'm thinking at some point, Curtis, we had a conversation, could have bridged earlier to bring Ben up, but he didn't really want to. This would have put him in a better position instead of sitting behind me. But it is what it is. Finally, Marcelo makes a move. And, and this is good. And this is welcome. I'd like to see people at least taking some initiative, but to sit in like the whole time, there are strong men back here and, and nobody's doing anything. Dean, I'm not certain what his coach is telling him. Maybe he, you know, just taking it easy today. Jamie looking strong there. And there's Tom. So I slide in behind Tom and it's hard to see, but he leaves a little more of a gap to Jamie than I like. And he makes these wicked little accelerations. And then it's like, oh, I got to close this gap. But what do we have here? Dog in the roadway. And we'll stop this. Yeah. And some of the yellow line has been violated, but we'll make an exception here. And this dog is a little bit scared. So close pass here. Ah, And so I seemed like I was the only one to hit the brakes or I hit the brakes the most. Maybe one of them was just like coasting, but I hit the brakes. So I didn't want to go down. There's no real prize money given here. And I've seen what happens when you go down. Regardless, I have missed the bus on this one. But I didn't go down. So I am good with that. Yeah, and I try, you know, look, my 30 second power, 300 watts, instantaneous over 400. And I got so close. But with strong men at the front driving, men who did nothing earlier to help with the chase, fresh, there's nothing I can do about it. And so I just watch the wheels ride away into the sunset. And this just happens slowly. So we'll kind of fast forward here. And there's more of that. They're up the road. They're further up the road. And we're turn, turning around here. They're up the road. Nice job, everyone. What can I say? A good time was had by all. Really happy no one got taken out by the dog. Until next time, peace out.